Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a very nice number theory problem. We have 10 factorial equals 2 to the power a times 3 to the power b times 5 to the power c times 7 to the power d. a, b, c, d are integers and in the more specific case they are prime numbers. So we're going to look at two options here. Uh, can they be different uh, prime numbers or can they be different integers? How many solutions do we have as an ordered uh, quadruple? I'll be presenting three methods and let's start with the first one. So we basically have 10 factorial and we're, if we're looking for prime numbers, we're basically looking at the prime factorization of 10 factorial. But the million dollar question is, how do you get the prime factorization of 10 factorial quickly? Maybe not so quickly because this is just the first method. So first of all, 10 factorial, you probably haven't memorized it, I haven't either, is 3,628,000, I mean 8,800. <laughs> okay, it's kind of like a weird number. 3,628,800. Great. And we're going to use this number to find the prime factorization. One of the things that it looks like a very big number, right? But one of the things you should immediately notice it, it, uh, is that it ends in two zeros. Obviously, factorials end in zeros and the number of zeros increase uh, as you deal with higher and higher factorial. And there's actually a really nice way of finding the number of zeros that the number ends in. Of course, I'm talking about the consecutive zeros at the end of the number. Anyway, so let's go ahead and write this as 36,288 multiplied by 100. Notice that we're going to do the prime factorization, so it would help to break this number down as much as possible. For example, 100 would be a good one, and then we can break down 100 separately. But what about 36,288? After some work, you're hopefully going to realize that it can be written as 64 times 560. By the way, this is a lot of work. I'm skipping all these steps because that's going to take forever. All right? But let me just give it to you. This number can be written as 64 th times 567. And then we're going to break down each of these numbers. For example, 64 is 2 to the 6th power. 567, notice that it's 560 plus 7, and both of these are divisible by 7. This is actually 7 times 80, and this is 7 times 1. So their sum is actually going to be 7 times 81. Make sense? So we can kind of write this as 7 times 81 and 81 can actually be written as 3 to the fourth power awesome so we're really making a lot of progress in terms of prime factorization 100 is 4 times 25 and that can be written as 2 to the second multiply by 25 which is 5 to the second obviously this is going to take longer to do but i skip some steps to save some time now let's go ahead and put the powers of 2 together anything else that can be combined we get 2 to the 8th power, and I'm going to just write those primes from smallest to largest. And then next we have 3 to the 4th power, and then after that we have 5 to the 2nd power, and finally we have 7 to the 1st power. And this basically concludes the problem if we are looking for prime numbers. So these are going to be the values of A, B, C, D. In other words, A is equal to 8, B is equal to 4, C is equal to 2, and D is equal to 1. The problem is asking for A, B, C, D, but if it's asking for the sum of A, B, C, D, then you can just add them up and you're going to get 15 from there. Anyways, once you find these numbers, anything else is possible. Great, so let's go ahead and explore before we go into the second and third methods, if we can find other solutions, like what would happen if A, B, C, D didn't have to be prime numbers and they could just be any positive integers, right? For example, could any of these be zero, right? <laughs> that would be a good question. And think about it. You have 10 factorial and it was written as 2 to the A, 3 to the B, 5 to the C, and 7 to the D. If any one of these is zero or anything lesser than these values, such as A equals 7, A equals 5, whatever, you're going to have a leftover, right? And that leftover actually needs to go into one of these. Let's say instead of 2 to the 8th, you use 2 to the 7th. Then you're going to have an extra 2. It has to go into one of these. And unfortunately, that's not going to work. 
That's what is so unique about prime factorization, because when the bases are primes, there is only one way to do it, and that's called the unique prime factorization or uniqueness of something theorem, whatever. You get the idea, hopefully, right? Okay, so those are the only values. Looks like it, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, because second method is more standard and it's actually fun. You know why? Because we're going to use the floor value. Or the floor function. What is the floor function? Floor function is basically the closest integer that is less than the number. So if you have something like 3.14, does that look familiar? Kind of like pi-ish. Then its floor value is going to be 3. Or if you have negative 2.5, its floor value is going to be negative 3. What is going on? You have to go down. In other words, you have to round down. It's the closest number, but it, what if I had 3.8? Isn't 4 closer? but it has to be less than the number. Make sense? So the floor value of x is always less than or equal to the actual number itself. If x is an integer, of course, they're equal. Make sense? Cool, cool. So here's how we use floor value with these kinds of problems. So the idea is to find the number of twos, threes, fives, and sevens in 10 factorial. Here's what you need to do. Take 10, divide by two, and take the floor value. You're gonna get five and then take 10 and divide by the next power of 2, which is 4, and take the floor value all the time. So it's kind of like ignore the remainder. Just divide, but ignore the remainder. You're going to get these three numbers. This is just for powers of 2, and you add these numbers, 5 plus 2 plus 1, which gives you 8. That basically indicates that 10 factorial has 8 twos in it. Why does this work? Go ahead and write out all the evens, and you're going to realize why this works. Let's go ahead and take a look at the threes, same way. 10 over 3, 10 over 9, again, you're going to do the floor division. This is 3, this is 1, that gives you 3 to the 4th power. And then you do the same thing with the 5, 10 over 5. You can't do 10 over 25 because 25 is large. I mean, you can, but that's just going to give you a 0, right? So you just have to go with 5 to the 2nd and eventually 7 to the 1st. Put it together, 10 factorial one more time is going to be 2 to the 8th, 3 to the 4th, 5 to the 2nd, and 7 to the 1. If I don't write the multiplication symbols, do you mind? I hope you don't. And let's go ahead and talk about the third method real quick. Third method is actually, and then I'd like you to let me know what you think about these methods, like which one you like better. If you rank them, that would be awesome, like, you know, my first choice, second, and third choice, whatever. All right, great. So now, here is what 10 factorial means. I'm going to go ahead and do this do it this way because think about it. Like think think about the first method like 3 million something. Are you serious? I'm not going to do that. But 10 can be broken down into 5 times 2. 9 is 3 squared. 8 is 2 to the third power. 7 is just 7. 6 is 2 times 3. 5 is 5. 4 is 2 to the second. Notice that I'm just uh, circling the prime numbers. 3 is 3, 2 is 2 and 1 we don't care. <laughs> you get that? Put it together. For example, we have 2, 2 to the 3rd, and another 2, and 2 to the 2nd, and another 2, 2 to the 1st, right? Put it all together, you're going to get 2 to the 8th. Great. It shouldn't be different, right? 3 to the 4th, and then 5 to the 2nd, and 7 to the 1st, because this is always, always, always unique. That's one of the coolest theorems in number theory, and... This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.